Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security professional, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting May 5th, 2014. Let's try to keep it short with three of the top InfoSec stories this week. First, next week is Microsoft and Adobe Patch Day, and as usual, both companies posted their pre-notification. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, expect Microsoft to release eight security bulletins next week. The bulletins will fix flaws in the usual suspects, programs like Windows, Internet Explorer, and Office, but one of the updates also fixes uh, vulnerabilities in an unnamed Microsoft service. Server product. Microsoft rates two of the uh, updates as critical and the rest as important. Also, Adobe plans to release the update next week to fix flaws in a Reader and Acrobat. So if you're an Adobe Reader user, be sure to get that update next week as well. Next is a story about a breach we heard about this week that might be a good learning experience for other administrators out there. This week, we learned the website 4chan got hacked, or more specifically, the administrator of 4chan, who goes by the moniker Moot, shared a story about how attackers were able to steal his credentials and post as him on 4chan. Now, I'll save all the details for the blog post, but essentially bad guys were able to enumerate the 4chan website, find a few files that were not protected, and also had SQL injection flaws within these files, and then used the SQL injection to steal some credentials so that they could log on as the administrator on the 4chan site. By the way, if you haven't heard of 4chan, I'm not sure I'd recommend you go there. Uh, It is a well-known popular site, and it's known as an image form where people can share images anonymously with each other and other information. And it's really known for starting anonymous posting. A lot of people go there to post things anonymously, and its members are known as anons or anonymous members. And many people relate 4chan to the group known as anonymous. So there's a lot of hacking information and hacking activity that is also shared on this site. So it's one I sometimes go to as a researcher, but it does have a lot of inappropriate content. Anyway, one of the interesting things about this story is Moot, or the uh, administrator of 4chan, shared a lot of details about how the hack happened, including some lessons he learned from it. Things like uh, throttling HTTP access, uh, making sure not to put one-up HTTP files that might be holes in the future, uh, ways to encrypt data better so that people couldn't so easily steal authentication credentials, and other things like that. So if you're a website administrator, be sure to go to the blog post associated with this video as I'll share Moot's blog post and it has a lot of detail about how the hack happened and how he could have protected himself from it. So for the final story this week, I'm going to jump on to this week's World Password Day. During this week, specifically on Wednesday, fell World Password Day, which is a day security experts in the security community talk about the importance of passwords. No matter how good your security is, how many protection mechanisms you have, chances are you can authenticate to get into your systems. And this authentication probably depends on passwords. A big part of our security depends on how good our passwords are, and that's why having good password security best practices are very important. So here are some of my password tips. You've probably heard some of them before, but we should share them again. First, you should have secure passwords. To have a secure password, it has to have some length and some complexity. Your password should be at least 14 characters long, if not more, and should contain more than just alphanumeric characters. It should contain semicolons and in, in, uh, uh, bang signs and non-alphanumeric characters. The point of this is, the longer your password is, the harder it is to crack, and the more types of characters that can be in your password, the more 
more combinations a password cracker has to go through. And by the way, we've covered this in a lot of detail before. WatchGuard released a video a long time ago called Bud Logs In, which is playing here. So I recommend you go check out that video for more password security tips. The best tip to creating a complex long password is use a passphrase. Create a short sentence. Your short sentence will include spaces and normal grammar like uh, commas and periods, and thus it will be long and have a lot of complexity. Tip number two is do not use the same password everywhere. Most people do this. To make their life simple, they use the same password on every site and for every login. This is bad because password databases will be stolen. People might be able to key log one of your passwords. And if you use the same password everywhere, someone gaining access to a non-critical site, like maybe some weird forum, may still get the password you use to log on to Gmail or Amazon and other more critical sites you visit. So do not use the same password everywhere. And by the way, these are actually hard tips to follow. Creating a long, random, complex password and using different passwords everywhere would obviously become very burdensome. So my number one tip for passwords right now is think about using a password vault. It's going to be impossible for most humans to use really long, complex passwords everywhere. So the best way to get around this is to pick a password vault program. There are many programs that will automatically generate very, very strong passwords for you and will store those passwords for all the different sites you visit. To make it easy for you to log on to all kinds of different sites and all kinds of different properties using different passwords. Now the one caveat is these programs obviously need their own master password password and if bad guy gets that he has all the keys to your kingdom but the point is you then only have to remember one master password and if you make sure to use a very very secure password for that you should be well protected so again, for World Password Day, use long, complex passwords, use different passwords everywhere, and the easiest way to use these tips is by actually picking a password vault and using it. So that's it for this week. I hope it was interesting and helpful. As usual, be sure to follow our blog, thewatchguardsecuritycenter.com, where you can get all kinds of stories and where we'll be sure to post alerts about the upcoming patch days. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.